What's going on everyone? Cameron Blazett here, welcoming you to the MLP Post Draft Power Rankings. Now, I said I would upload this Tuesday or Wednesday, but technical issues, I went to eat girl, girlfriend, my girlfriend for her birthday. And yesterday, I tried recording it and posting it last night, but you could not hear me at all. Like, for some reason, you couldn't hear me. I sounded like I was about a mile away from the mic, so hopefully I fixed that. So, MLP is basically like the UCL. There's 16 teams. And instead of being five tiers and you get two tier threes, this is six tiers and you get one in every tier. You get your mega and you get four free Pokemon. And you have four thousand. You get four hundred points. Four thousand. Oh my gosh! You get four hundred points, and you have to spend them wisely. It's basically staying within the point system. So let's go ahead and get straight into the get into the rankings at number sixteen. We have the Utah Star Raptors. Now. Utah Staraptors, they have a Victini, a Reuniclus, a Sigilith, a Gligar, Magmortar, Driftblim, Mega Agron, Umbreon, Terrakion, Electivire, Metacham. And as you can see, five things are weak to Ghost, five things are weak to Ground. And it's like this team has one Ghost Resist in Umbreon. And this thing is also very weak to Knock Off. It has four things weak to Knock Off. And yes, Terrakion is there to kind of like scare away knockoff users, but I mean, Ter Ter Terrakion being your only response to a dark type basically is kind of scary. Um, your walls don't click, like Mega Agron, Umbreon don't really click well together because they're both weak to fighting, and while one of them do, they do cover a fairy weakness. I don't see how this team like clicks well. Um, you're like I said, five. You're ha not having a grass water type or a dragon and fairy type. You're like nothing really like connects. You have a lot of common weaknesses, and since you don't have those four types, you don't have any patches for them. And that's my problem with this team. It's because uh, they just do not click. So we're gonna move on to number fifteen. And we have the Georgia Grand Bulls. Now, Georgia Grand Bulls has a very offensive team. Weavile, Guja, Zorark, Braviary, Weezing, Charizard, Megazam, Tachacroak, Magnazone, Fralligator, and Archaeops. The problem, I'm sorry if you heard that. The problem with this is if you can look over here, they are super frail. Like, all these attackers are frail besides Guja, Magnazone, and Weezing. Like, a very, very frail team. It only has two, maybe three reliable walls if you count Magnazone. It's going to be hard for all these teams to like get going. I feel like this team to get going because it's just like Mega Alakazam is weak to Ghost in Dark. And your best response to Ghost and Dark types is Weavile. And Weavile is not that strong. Um, Ghost, you could say Toxicroak or something as well, but Toxicroak is also very weak. As you can see, Weavile is four times weak to Fighting, Toxicroak is four times weak to um, Psychic. And Mega Alakazam covers both those, but Mega Alakazam is also very frail. Like, you can't really send in a Weezing against when you are when you have Toxicroak out, because it's also weak to Psychic. Weavile is weak to Fighting, along with Magnazone. Like, this team had... It's very offensive, and depending on how he plays it, he might be one of those like hyper offensive teams. Depending on how he plays, he could be like higher up. I just don't see how it's gonna work, in my opinion. Um, you only have Defog to get rid of hazards, which means all the hazards you set are useless. I think Toxicroak gets Toxic Spikes, so it becomes useless. And Weezing being a good Will O Whisper, but it's very passive. So we're gonna move on to number fourteen. And we have the Montreal Kyrams. They have a Chansey, Slowbro, Kyram, Gastrodon, Miss Magius, Musharna, Mega Scizor, Porygon 2, Kyram Black, Sensino, and Carbink. And this team's pretty bulky. Like, Slowbro, Chansey, Core is disgusting. But when you look at it, this team is very, very, very knockoff weak. So, um, Chansey needs its EVLI, Slowbro's weak to it, Kyram will need its item. Gastrodon loves leftovers. Miss Pages and Musharna are both weak to it. Mega Scizor being your best switch into knockoff. Porygon 2 needs a CBLI. Kieran Black really doesn't need an item to hit hard, but 
it loves it because it hits even harder. Um, Sinsino will need its item because it's very weak, even though his skill link is very weak. And Carbank being your best is also a really good swap in, but it's very passive. If you look at this team, it's, like I said, very knockoff weak. Um, I don't understand why you need Kiram and Kiram Black on the same team. It just increases your fairy weakness and Mega Scissor being your best switch into fairy types. Fairy types can easily cover HP fire, and since they're very... Their special attacks are usually really high, this could be a problem for this team. Um, I do like how Gastrodon and Mega Scizor click. Gastrodon being four times weak to grass, Mega Scizor quad resisting grass, Mega Scizor being weak to fire, you have a slow bro. So that core right there is pretty good. But besides that, I don't understand. Like, you had drafting Kieran Black, or whichever one you drafted first, and then drafting the other one. Just increased your fighting weakness with Chansey, Kiram, Porygon 2, Kiram Black, Sinsino. Yeah, you have a Mega Scizor, but that's resisted. Carving, no, I mean, it's neutral. Carving's neutral. Musharna and Miss Magius being, and Slowbro being your only good swap ends to them. And 90% of fighting types will have knockoff or coverage moves. So, I like. I don't know. Maybe this team will work. I just don't. It's, it's kind of out there on why i guess it's like i don't understand like i just really do not understand i'm gonna say that a lot in these lowest teams because i just don't understand some of the things i don't understand the mindset maybe on later on in the season we'll get we'll start to understand but until then we're gonna just leave them at number 14. all right at number 13 we have the indie scythers they're rocking with a Raikou, Rotom, Washko, Balian, Frostlass, Swellow, Mr. Mime, Mega, Absol, Armado, Torrenty, Dust Noir, and Volcarona. Now, the first thing I wrote down when I was looking at this team is why do you need Rotom Wash when you have a Raikou? Do you, I mean, you, you, have a good, you already have a great electric type, and instead of grabbing a type that you need, like, um, I don't know, a grass type, because... A grass type, yeah. You you need a grass type on this team because you have a water and you already have a water type and a fire type, so you just grab a grass type and you'll be good. I don't understand to be honest. It just kind of, eh. Um, Cobalion is a great defensive monster. I'm um, not a monster. It's very defensive. Gets Thunder Wave, Volt Switch, Stealth Rocks. It's nice. Frostless gets spikes. Armado being a good um hazard removal, but. It's weak to rocks. Like, this team's pretty weak to walk rocks. Like, Frostlass doesn't like them. Swellow doesn't like them. Armaldo, Torrenty, and Volcarona do not like rocks. And Armaldo being your only way to get rid of them is going to put a lot of pressure on Armaldo. And it only has base 100 defense, which is pretty good, but I don't know. Mega Absol being a huge threat. Um, it's a great wall breaker. The thing is... It's very, very weak um, on the defensive side. Mr. Mind being your fairy shows that you waited too long to grab a fairy type. I don't know, maybe you're just like a god with Mr. Mime, I don't know. Um, I just, like, this team, for me, some reason, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, maybe on paper, it, it kind of looks good, but at the same time, I don't, like, think it's that great. Frostlass being like an automatic suicide lead, if they see it, they can almost guarantee a suicide lead unless you run like specs. I don't know. Like, I love Frostlass, but in League, it's not the greatest thing in the world. So, there's some of these teams that have ranked lower, and this is one of those teams where I don't kind of like understand, and later on in the season, we'll see it move up if it works out. I don't think this team's going to work out, to be honest, but we're going to just... Move right along to number 12, which is the Cleveland Gravelers. They're rocking with a Manaphy, Scolipede, Exploud, Hitmonlee, Sandslash, Electabuzz, Megazard X, Skarmory, Espeon, Trevenant, Mountiana. On paper, like I said, this team looks great. It's very frail. Outside of Manaphy, Sandslash, Skarmory, maybe Zard X, this team is super, super frail. Um, Like... I don't, these are just a bunch of like hard hitters that just die if you throw a rock at it half the time. Sculpey being with a, uh, a great speed or speed passer and speed in attack to a Zardex is very scary, but they're both kind of 
weak to rocks, and um, I do not think... I mean, him only and Sandslash give you two rapid spinners, but him only being a better fake-out sweeper, and Sandslash is just not that great. Maybe it is. I'm just underestimating it. I just don't think it's that good. Um, you only have one... Like, here's the thing. When you draft a Dragon-type... You're going to want a fairy type to give an immunity and a steel type in case your fairy type dies or something. The thing is, when you draft a dragon type and you don't have a fairy type, to me, that's war That's not good. Like, I need to see a strong, like, fairy dragon steel core. That's, like, one of the most important things, in my opinion, in the game, is making sure you have that click. Um, Manaphy, Zardex, and Trevenant do make up a good fire, uh, fire water grass core, giving them good, like... Synergy, Manaphy being the best setup sweeper in the game, in my opinion, you pass speed to that thing and it sets up tail glow and you lose, basically. Yeah, you just lose because this thing can just, it, Sculpede gets iron defense and if you run max special defense, uh, you just win. So, I'm just saying, this team could work. Well, it, it's going to work. I feel like it's going to be like one of the middle teams in the league. It goes like six or four. But until I see... Until I actually see that, I have to link a blower due to this team being incredibly frail. Like, I don't, it's like, uh, bulky sweepers are nice, like Manaphy, but besides that, this team does not like, does not like a good Scarfer. Like, a well-placed Scarfer kind of runs through this team. Alright, we're going to move on to number 11, which is the Chicago Chikoritas. Now, basically from this point forward, the teams are pretty good. Um... Honestly, the only reason I rank this team so low is because Flygon, F Steelix, and Gramble is one of the most passive Fairy Water Dragon Steel. I mean, Fairy Dragon Steel cores I've ever seen. Cause like Flygon, very weak, like does not hit hard. Steelix has a base 80 attack and like 180 defense. And Gramble, also being a really good defensive monster, unlike the defensive side, but special special sweepers kind of destroy this core and just open the gates for other things to come in yeah meloetta shame and mew are good special walls but besides those three i mean those three are great actually like those three can just tank hits but it's just this team's also knockoff weak if you can't tell like knockoff weak knockoff is one of those moves that if you're weak to it it's not that good um i do like the mammal swine on this team it does provide a good stealth rock user um a good like it just hits like a truck. You have a lot of physical attackers. I mean, Jolteon is a special attacker, and Infernape is mixed, and Shaman special. Um, I, it's a good diverse diversity. Just like the cores need to be like less passive. I think, like a good core is like your Mega Sharpedo, Infernape, Shaman. That's a really good, like, Water Grass Fire core. And if you could just like upgrade Flygon and just upgrade Flygon to like. I don't know, Bagon, and it becomes better. I'm just kidding, don't do that. Um, I just don't like Flygon in League format, to be honest. It has good potential, it's just not that good. I mean, Flygon does get Defog, I guess that's why you drafted it, but so does Mew, so I don't see why. We're going to move on to number 10, and that is the Brooklyn Rotoms. Brooklyn Rotoms have the Landorus, Tish, Wicoon, Amoongus, Shuckle, Red Dress, Furfru, Mega Garchomp, Togekiss, Ditto, Rotom Cut, or Mo, I think, and Klefki. Now, Landorus T is a monster in League format. And so is Mega Garchomp. But Landorus T is your fastest mon. And then, I feel like Rotom Cut, and then Mega Gar- no, Mega Garchomp. Togekiss, something along those lines, like, you only have one mon over base 100. Everything else is a lot of bulky attackers, like, Mega Garchomp's bulky. Togekiss is one of my least favorite mons. Because of how bulky it is. Um, Rotom Cut is a great wall, but I feel like Mega Garchomp could have been replaced with something better. Landorus T is four times weak to grass. Shuckle's weak to gr I mean, not grass. Ice. Amoongus is weak to grass. I mean, ice. Oh my gosh. Mega Garchomp's weak to ice. Togekiss is weak to ice. Rotom Cut is weak to ice. You have Suicune and Regice and Klefki to patch that up. And, but, like, Regice is bad. Just saying. I do not like Regice at all. Suicune being a very bulky mon, very good setup attacker. 
Speaking of Moongus core is really good. You just need a fire type, like drop Rotom Cut for a good fire type, and this team is 50 times better, in my opinion. Um, you don't have a fairy type. No, you do have a fairy type. My bad. So like you have Mega Garchomp, Togekiss, Klefki. That's an annoying core. Like they're both like Mega Char Garchomp being a physical attacker, Togekiss being a special attacker, Klefki just being annoying. This team is like kind of annoying, but the ice weakness just really makes me want to put it lower. So that's what I did. So we're gonna move on to number nine, and we have the Midwest Masquerades. Speaking of bulky teams. This team is thick. Gothitel Blissey, Haxorus Frizion, Lightheart, Auroras, Mega Sableye Fortress, Talonflame Quagmire, Dene. Your only attacking mons that makes sense is Haxorus Frizion, Talonflame. Besides that, everything else is just really bulky. It's also like very fairy weak. Like besides the Fortress and Talonflame. This team does not like fairies at all. Like a good setup sweeping fairy type, like a um, Slurpuff, would sweep this team in a heartbeat. Like, give it a Belly Drum, Play Rough, Drain Punch, Fire Blast, or Flamethrower, whichever one it gets. And this team will probably sweep besides the Town Flame. Now, yeah, Quagsire does get unaware, so it kind of stops setup sweepers, and Town Flame gets that priority Raybird, but I do not think Town Flame is good in League format just because of the four times weakness to rocks. It does not hit it that hard. Um, Mega Sableye being one of the bulkiest uh, Megas in the game. Gothitel being able to trap things and set up in their face, and they won't be able to do much about it because it'll just trick you a scarf. Blissey is there. Um, Blissey is very bulky, gives you a Stealth Rocker and Thunder Waver, and just very annoying. So does Live Heart. It just sits there and eats, but it's also a very big setup plotter. Like, and then again, you do have Quagsire. So, my problem with this team is the lack of special offense. Verizion being your only specially offensive mon, and I think it has base 80 special attack or something along those lines, or base 90. Like, I don't. Verizion is not that great in my opinion, but. Haxorus being a great setup sweeper and the Talonflame being able to take out good chunks in most Pokemon with a Sword Stance and a Brave Bird. So that thing gets up a Sword Stance and lives a hit. Like, it's going to get off a huge hit no matter what. Um, the Dene, I just don't want to talk about it. I don't get it. Um, you do are you are lacking a good water type, in my opinion. Uh, Quagsire is there and it works well with Fortress. But it's almost too bulky in the sense that it can't do much back. Yeah, it can Toxic Recover Stall, but that just allows things to set up. If it sets up on a Quagsire, it does get the unaware. But like I said, Quagsire can only do so much to an extent. It's not the greatest water type in my opinion. I don't know why it's OU anymore. Like, I don't get it. But I just don't think Quagsire is that great in League format. And you do have a good grass resist in Fortress Town Flame Haxorus. But I don't know. This team could easily go really high up or it can fail and go really low. So that's why it's kind of in the middle. So we're going to move on to number 8. And we have the Charlotte B Drills. And they have a Zapdos Conk Helder, Chandelure Blastoise, Dusclops, Behe, and Mega Ampharos, Doug Trio, Whimsicott, Crawdon, Alakazam. Looking at this team, the first thing you see is Conk Helder and Zapdos work together really well. And you throw Chandelure, you have a Chandelure and a Whimsicott. Work really well. Blastoise in there helps out a lot. Mega Ampharos, Whimsicott, Steel type. Don't have a Steel type. Which kind of is annoying because you only have one Dragon Resist. And Dragon, again, is one of the scariest types in League format. And my problem with this team, I've never seen Mega Ampharos do good. That's basically it. Um, this team is pretty passive once you get down, once you go past Chandelure and the fact that it doesn't, there. I mean, Cronut hits really hard, and Alakazam is alright, but like the walls are really good. They work together good. Just Whimsicott, uh, Whimsicott, Mega Ampharos, and Dusclops. I've never actually seen use good in League format. Dusclops just sits there, just pain splits everything. Willow splits it. Like eventually, that dies. There's not much you can do, like, knockoff kind of hurts this team. 
Uh, Conk could switch into a knockoff. Um, that's about it. Whimsicott can too, but Crawdon likes its item. Uh, Alakazam likes it dies to a knockoff if it even though if, if uh, excuse me, unless it's sashed, which is very common. A Mega Ampharos is pretty bulky, but it's also very slow. Sorry about that. My hand was hurting, so I had to pop it. So let's move on to number seven. We have the Goldenrod Zepstrike. This is when, like, the teams are very close. Like, very close. Most of the teams from, like, eight up are very close, in my opinion. So Goldenrod Zepstrike is our last... La uh, rocking with Landorus Eye, Entei, Snorlax, Excelgore, Raichu, Audino, Mega Blastoise, Cresselia, Salamence, Registail, Nidoqueen. Oh my gosh, this team has Landorus Eye, Entei, and Mega Blastoise on the same team. Those three bonds together work so, so well. If this team had, like, a good bulky grass type, it would be it'd be up higher, in my opinion, because um, fire types kind of hurt this team. Besides Mega Blastoise, like, a fire t like a good fire type kind of hurts this team. Yes, Salamence is there, but most fire types get Will-O-Wisp. Salamence doesn't want to take a Will-O-Wisp unless it's special, but special isn't going to be needed because you have a Lander's Eye. Um, Nidoqueen is great diversity, like if you want a good, really di good device, uh, diverse mon that can be offensive or defensive, Nidoqueen in my opinion is one of the best out there. It, be can, it can be run defensive on both sides and offensive on both sides, it gets Toxic Spikes and Stealth Rocks, it gets basically every, it gets all the elemental punches I believe, it gets Fire Blast, it gets Sludge Wave, Life Orb, Sheer Force is nothing to sleep on. Registeel. Kind of the same thing, it can be on defenses on both sets, but the curse set is very popular, so how much is the mixed attack of Cresselia, mixed wall, Mega Blastoise, Audino, both mixed walls. Snorlax is like curse lax, choice banded. Um Yeah, just this this team is very good, but it's kind of slow when you look at it. Like Exogor Raichu are your two fastest mons, then you have Salamence and Lander's Eye. And then everything else is very slow. Like, I know that's a lot of speed up there, but you usually want something in, like, the 90s to back it up. Like, I don't think there's that much in the 90s. I think it goes, like, from the 100s to, like, the 70s and 60s. Could be wrong. I may not know my speed tiers that well, which could be right, but, like, Entei... Oh, oh Entei's base 100, too. But besides that, like, everything's in, like, the 60s, I believe. And that's not bad. It's just if you're... You can't, like, go back you're going to be forced to bring a lot of fast mons, and that can get predictable. So, let's move on to number six. We have the Washington Weaviles. They have a Scizor, Dawnfan, Tangrowth, Norivorn, Malamar, Bastiodon, Megazard Y, Keldeo, Azelf, Ampharos, Levani. Now, this team looks weird, but when you actually look at it, some of these things work together so well. Like, Tangrowth, Megazard Y. Tangrowth does not like fire types or water types. I mean fire types. And Megazard Y can swap into a fire type sort of well. Keldeo is here. Keldeo, Megazard Y, Tangrowth is a great core. I mean, yeah, Lee Vanny's there too. And all, but all Lee Vanny does is basically just step Sticky Webs. And when you look at it, Sticky Webs help out this team so much. Like, Malamar loves Sticky Webs. Keldeo loves Sticky Webs. Azelf loves Sticky Webs. Megazard Y loves it. It's just, they just, this team's so good with Sticky Webs up. Uh... If this team had a fairy type, it'd be really good, but it does not have a fairy type, and um, Bastiodon is kind of annoying because of the fact that its defenses are super high, and it gets like it gets that move Metal Burst, I think it's called, where it's like a counter, but it's times 1.5, and it returns damage, so it can eat a hit and just fire, by, fire back a Metal Burst, gets him a Stealth Rocker. He has a great Rapid Spinner and Dawn Fan and a Debogger and Scizor. Azelf is a good Suicide Lead, or it can be offensive. Ampharos is okay at best. Like in, in Malamar, I've never seen use good in League format. Now ever have I or Noivern. But if I feel like with Sticky Webs, these two can put in a really good work. So let's move on to number five. In number five, we have the KC Carvanas or Kansas City or whatever. This team has an Extra Drill, a Breloom, Rotom Heat, Sock, Miltank, Dodrio, Mega Altaria, Latios, Vaporeon, Sneasel, Siviper. Extra Drill and Rotom Heat both work together very well in my opinion. 
Exeter being weak to ground. Rotom Heat covers that. Rotom Heat being weak to rock. And Rotom Heat covers... I mean, Exeter Joe covers that. They're both weak to water, but you have a Latias, Megalteria, Breloom to cover those two. And Vaporeon gets um, water absorbed. So, like, Vaporeon, Rotom Heat, Breloom work together very well. Excadrill, Megalaltaria, and Latias work together very well. I don't get why you need Sock when you have Breloom. I feel like you could have grabbed a better Tier 4. Or, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, a better Tier 4. And something to cover a like weakness. Like, Miltank, I like Miltank because Vaporeon doesn't like a Grass-type. You have your Miltank. Um, there's this... Sneasel's alright. Um, it's getting... Uh, excuse me. It's a good Pursuit Trapper. It can do a lot of things, uh, like I said, Breloom, a uh, great mock puncher, hits very hard, just a bit on the slow side. The Steam's on the slow side, that's why it's not, like, higher up. Like, Latias and Sneasel being your fastest mods, then Miltank hits, like, base 100, I think. Like, Altaria's base 80. So, besides that, this team's very good. I love this team. Like, I feel like this team is gonna be positive by a lot. So, we're gonna move on to number four. Number four is the Richmond Umbreon's. Now, the Richmond Umbreons have a Hydreigon, Celebi, Lucario, Cofagrius, Claydol, Polyrath, Mega, 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 Mega Manetric, Milotic, Florges, Arcanine, Slacking. Hydreigon and Florges work together very well. Throw Lucario in there. So you have, a, you, have a, you have two mixed attackers and Hydreigon, Lucario, and you have your wall with Florges. Milotic and Arcanine also help those two out a lot, and Celebi. So those right there work together really good. Pythagoras being a great wall as well. I mean, Slacking... I don't know what to say about Slacking. Mega Manetric, a great special wall breaker. Um, it helps out because you don't have that much physical wall breaker besides maybe Lucar like Lucario can, but it's like I like the special set more. Hydreigon is, can be run off physically offensive. I don't know. Um, slacking, I guess, can wall break. Just throw a choice band on it and then just swap out after you could get an impact or something. Or no double edge. Um Milotic and Arcanine work together so well. I can't emphasize it enough. Like that's such a good core. And Celebi in there helps out a lot. Um Hydreigon Celebi it we to bug, but that's covered out very well. This team overall is very good. I love this team. Um just kind of knockoff week. Like everything on here loves its items. Like, kind of needs their items, like Milotic doesn't really, but Hydreigon can take one. Lucario kind of gets its attack boost, but it's very frail. But that's why it's kind of lower on the weak, because it's like kind of weak to dark. Just dark in general, but overall, this is a good team. We're going to move on to number three, and we have the New York Metagross. Now, New York Metagross has a Jirachi, Mandibus, Tentacruel, Sceptile, Pinsir Rotom, Megalopunny, Clefable, Helios, Smeargle, Frogadier. And something about this team just clicks really well. Mega Low Punny, Clefable, Jirachi. Those three just are insane. Like, oh my gosh. Like, that's a great core. And throw Helios in there as well. This is a really, really good core in my opinion. Mandibus can take the ground types that it's weak to. Rotom can swap into him. Sceptile can. Pinsir can. Smeargle can frickin' baton past a shell smash to a Mega Low Punny. Can we think? I can't even emphasize how a Smeargle can learn, because it learns every move in the game, can Shell Smash and then pass that to a Mega Low Punny. Like, plus two, plus two, nothing's really gonna live. Everything just gets two shot in the game, I believe. Uh, Frogadier is whatever. I don't really care about Frogadier. Um, one thing this team does lack is a Fire type. I believe, yeah, it lacks a Fire type. But. It doesn't really need a fire type because this core is kind of insane. Um, it's kind of it is fire weak, but Tentacruel kind of handles that sort of in Frogadier, I guess. Like this. Besides that, that's another reason it's kind of lower is because of the fire type. But this is a great team overall. It was almost number one, but I had to like sit down and look at the other two, which is number two. Speaking of, is the San Jose Sharpedos. They are rocking a Latios, a Sylveon, Empoleon, Regirock, Hitmonchan, Cryogonal, Mega Pinsir, Crocodile, Darmanitan, Roserade, Galvantula. Um, this is honestly my favorite team in the draft. Because Latios, Sylveon, Empoleon. Bam, great fire water dragon. I mean, 
Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Empoleon, Darmanitan, Rose Raid. Bam. Great Grass Water Fire Core. I don't know why I said it like that. Anyway, Galvantula gives you Sticky Webs. Mega Pinsir loves Sticky Webs. You have a good Volt Switcher in Galvantula, and Darmanitan being a great nuke. Crocodile can be offensive or defensive. Same with Roserade. Latios being a great offensive mon, but there is specially defensive presence there. Sylveon also being the same. Empoleon giving you new rock, giving you more rocks in Defog. Regirock giving you like a rock polish, weakness policy. Regirock is honestly very scary. You have two rapid spinners and Hitmonchan and Karagonal. Karagonal not being the greatest rapid spinner. It does get freeze dry, so that's pretty good. Its defense is bad, but its special defense is pretty good. Same with Hitmonchan, it has bad defense and good special defense. This team is very specially bulky, but you do get Regirock with base 200 and Crocodile, which gets um, Intimidate. And once Sticky Wheels are up, threats like Darmanitan just can sweep a team. And Crocodile, Hitmonchan can actually set up an agility and sweep a team. I've done it before. Um, this team overall is great. I love this team. And it just doesn't make number one. And number one, as you all know, is the Lake City Lucarios. Looking at this team, it's interest. It, it's kind of interesting. Heat Ring, Gliscor, Me and Shell, Electros, Spear Tomb, Swoobat, Mega Venusaur, Starmie, Aromatis, Dredagon, Ursaring. Dredagon is the best defensive dragon types, hands down. I like it better than Garchomp because it's not four times weak to ice. It gets Rough Skin Rocky Helmet, which can stop threats like a Mega Low Bunny. Aromatis is especially bulky, so those two work together well. Heat Ring can be run either way or offensive. Heat Ring works together really good with the Mega Venusaur and Starmie. Same thing. Mega Venusaur being bulky, Heat Ring being bulky, Starmie getting Rapid Spin. Bang. Just like that. Me and Xiao being a great physical wall breaker. Electros, one of the best assault best users in the game behind Kong Kelder. I don't get the Earth Ring, and, but it's whatever. I mean, if it's used right, I mean, the Guts boost is kind of scary. And Swoobat is kind of the same thing. Like, it's it looks bad on paper, but if the thing sets up, you lose. Because Psychic Flying is a good typing, to, in my opinion. Um, plus, it gets simple. Spear Tomb only being weak to Fairy. That being covered with Heatran, Mega Venusaur. Like, this team just works together ever really well. Gliscor being weak to Ice, Mega Venusaur has Thick Fat. Not only that, Heatran can cover that. Like, this thing's main, this team's main core is so diverse. Like, Mega Venusaur can be ran defensive or offensive. Dredagon can be ran defensive or offensive. Heatran can be run defensive or offensive. Electros can be run physical or special. So can... The spear tomb on the defensive side is like you don't know which way to hit this team, this team because it just is so diverse. And that's why I ranked it number one. So thanks guys for watching. If you do enjoy this, please hit that like and follow button or subscribe button. It will help me out a lot. Um, next week I'm gonna try to be on time. It's gonna be harder though because I have to watch all the matches and go from there. But this has been fun to do. Thanks for allowing me to do this again. Sorry it's being late. I had fun. This these some of these teams are really good. I'd like to see some of those lower teams prove me wrong and do like really good. But who knows? We'll see what's going on. Again, thanks for watching. And now guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.